This video is sponsored by Squarespace, your one-stop shop for creating and managing your own online brand, but more about that later in the video. Hello everybody, glad you could make it. My name is Kaylee Allen and it is damn hot in here. It is about 28 degrees and it is 82% humidity and I am damn. You feel me? I have a lot to talk about today. Today might be a longer video than usual, but I'm sure you can see by the length of the video anyway that it is so. I have three things to repop today. I have this beautiful variegated homolomina rubescence, which is very pretty. I have a variegated gloriosum, one of them, I have several, that is growing out that probably needs a good checkup. I'm going to put that in a bigger pot. And then I have this guy, and I can't remember the name of this guy, Aglaonema manila or something. He has two pups in the pot, which you might not be able to see right now. Again, we will get to it. So he has to be repotted as well. If they have enough roots on them, I will separate the pups. If not, I will keep them with the mother. So without further ado, let's get into it. I don't know which one I want to do first. I don't know. I feel like I kind of want to do the homolomina first. I don't really know why. So I'm going to move the other two. He does have more variegation than he appears. He is an older leaf, which really weird thing about variegated gloriosum, by the way. They, the leaves come in like this. They come in really creamy, but they do harden off to a white. Makes no sense, right? I know. So we'll put him down here. I'm going to get my gloves on because I don't really want to chip my nail polish because it'll look real ugly if I do. And please be aware, I'm in semi-gym kit today. I have my baggy unit pants on that I painted this very unit with. Yes, I still have them and I don't have any pockets. So I've had to stick my microphone down my underwear today. So that's fun, isn't it? <sighs> Let's breathe. I'm having a few breathing difficulties. I may have COVID again, guys. I know, I know. So if you catch me a little bit out of breath, that might be why. But I think it's clearing up anyway. I have a number of things to talk to you about today. I have a few things. I have like nine things. Hence, I said this would be a bit longer. Plus, we have three plants. So you know it's not going to be a quick one. So if you haven't already, grab a drink and grab a snack. Do the washing up. Do whatever you're doing. Do your chores. Do your repotting. If you're in the bath or something like that, make sure you're nice and comfortable. And we will get started. First things first, I'm going to build a pot. You've seen these a million times before. This is an L-hole self-watering insert. The little self-watering attachment thingy is in the bottom. And then this is just the outer pot here. So I'm gonna put this down because it doesn't require any building, but this bit does. So let's move him, even though he's, he's very pretty, is he not? And we're gonna build him in one moment. Like that. A few people have been asking me, by the way, about the video on self-watering pots. You will be getting that. I've almost planned that. That's almost done. I've just had a wild few weeks. Things are a little bit hectic here. Due to a few things, really, I've just got a lot going on in life at the minute. So I'm a little bit delayed. A few of you were asking about basically what's coming up on my content, and there are a few things, and I'll probably just get into it as we go because it makes more sense to, rather than have this video completely and utterly disjointed. I've built these for you a million times, and I will cover this when I do the review of these pots, so try not to worry too much. Um, it's very simple to build them though. We'll start with the aquarium because it's a very quick one. So if you're not interested, honestly, this is only going to take a couple of minutes. I posted on my Instagram and my Twitter last week that I'd had a power cut, which was really annoying because there was only three postcodes or zip codes for you in America that were affected by this power cut. Mine was one of them. And it wouldn't be so bad if I didn't have fish. I have a lot of fish, by the way. I have a 400 litre aquarium. It's not overstocked, but it's very well stocked. Like it's, it's got enough stock in it. I wouldn't want to add any much, any more stock because I think it's got quite a lot in it. So it's certainly not uh, capable of taking too much of a punch. And basically the power went off, went off a couple of times the night before and then kept sort of resetting itself. And then I think it went off for good. I don't know if it was switched off and kept off at one point, but it was in the early hours of the morning. So it was probably about four in the morning when the power got switched off in order for presumably the government to fix it, right? The, you know, the electricity company, whoever, to fix it, right? So that wasn't so good because I think it woke me up in the middle of the night that they were actually drilling outside, just drilling through the concrete in the road to get to these wires because apparently there's a wire that had malfunctioned or it broke or whatever. So that was the thing. Now, you wouldn't think that was too bad, again, if it hadn't been for the fish tank, anything else I can live with. I don't really know how I got through it. There's a few people basically saying, you know, how did you get through that? How did you not lose any fish? Essentially, my aquarium is kept at around about, there's a spider in there, it's kept at around about 
26 degrees, which was higher than I would like, but the room is just a bit warm and the light just warms the aquarium and that just seems to be the temperature that it wants to be at, to be honest. So it's kept at about that. I have air bubbles going, I have two filters going, and I have a power head going, I have a skimmer going, I have the light going, I have a few things going. So the main concern when it went off was the, not really even the filtration, to be honest, because I had a sort of way around that, which I'll get to. My concern was the temperature and the oxygen. At the risk of not boring people, um, I think the power went back on at about three in the afternoon. So they'd had around about 12 hours of no nothing. They started gasping. So they, the fish started swimming near the surface for quite a while. I think it was at about 10 or 11 in the morning. And I thought, oh great, this is not good. But at least I knew what it was. They were obviously running out of oxygen a little bit because there was no water disturbance and there was no air bubbles going. The easy way to get around that if it happens to you is to essentially get a jug, take the water from the tank, and pour it back in at a height and pour it quickly. That will force oxygen down into the water. And the harder you pour it, to be honest, the lower the oxygen will be sent and the longer it's got to diffuse. That's a good way of getting the oxygen back in. You can do that with fresh water if you want. I didn't want to do that because I'm on RO and I didn't have any RO at the time. So I did that for oxygen and I did it every two to three hours, something like that. I just went at it for 10 minutes, taking a jug out of the tank, pouring it at you know, a great height to get all the oxygen back in. So that was not so bad. The temperature, I couldn't do a damn thing about. Not a damn thing. So the temperature, I did nothing. I just hoped that it would gradually decrease and it would be okay because the whole house ran off electric. So what I've previously done to heat up water, if I've had to, I've had RO water in a big container and I've run the bath full of hot water and I've dropped it in. And obviously the surrounding water heats it up and that's fine. Couldn't do that because electricity powers that in this house. So I couldn't do anything about the temperature. In terms of the filtration and ammonia or whatever else, I didn't have any drugs to put in the tank to calm the fish down. I'd run out of those. But what I managed to do was I put some sea chem prime in, which essentially bonds. It can bond, I think, nitrates and nitrites, but I think it only bonds it for 48 hours. But it takes anything bad in the water and it makes it harmless. So I put a bit of that in, just in case I thought if the filters are off, and levels start going amiss, the fish probably aren't going to know about it. Honestly, that's how I got through it. They were fine. I didn't lose a single fish. They didn't even look too unhappy. They didn't lose too much color, apart from the gasping in the morning because the tank had been off for hours and hours without oxygen pumped into it. They were fine because as soon as I put the oxygen back in, within minutes, they, were, they weren't at the top anymore. They were further down. So that's what that is. If you see your fish constantly at the top gasping, it's probably oxygen. So you need to fix that. But that's essentially it. I'm just gonna tip this out real quick. Oh, he's nice. Look at him. He's gonna go in here and you know what? In fact, no, he's not going in here. <gasps> I fucked up. I've already fucked up. He's not going in here even though that's the perfect size pot. I'm lying to you. He's going in a different pot. God damn it. Give me a minute. I've just built this for nothing. He's going in this because I have to prioritize prioritize the other plants to go in the other pots. So he is going in something a little bit large, but I'm just going to plant him a bit higher. He should be okay. So I built that. I didn't need to build that yet. So let's just move on to the second pot. But yes, basically that's what happened with my aquarium. The power is back on. You have no idea what's just happened. Give me one minute. Give me one minute. Ooh, shit. Yeah, that's not so good. My giant gigantium in the corner just fell over. So I propped him up. He looks real bad. He's going to do it again. <gasps> oh, you have no idea how scary that is. I'm not even going to take a video because I don't want to give people anxiety on a Friday. Ooh, if it happens again, I'm fucked. He might snap. He might snap. He might be propagated real fast. Shit. Okay, we need to sort that. So I don't even know what I was saying, but yes. That's what happened with the power cut anyway. So all is fine now, but it was a little bit hairy for a while and I was very scared because I've, I've invested a lot of money in that tank, shall we just say. There's some rare placos in there. I think each one of the placos probably costs about 200 pounds at this point. So there's about five of them. And then I've got loads of rainbows. I've got some angels and things like that, but the rainbows I've invested in a long time ago and I've grown them really big and colorful. So to start again would be really sad. And I was really worried for the fish because I honestly thought, God, that's a horrible way to go. So, not very nice, you know.
If you're looking for a convenient way to create and run your own website, then Squarespace could be exactly what you're looking for. Squarespace is your one-stop shop to create your own website from the ground up, using a selection of stylish and super customizable templates. It's super easy to make changes to one of these templates and make it your own. I can quickly create a new website, choose a template that I like, and get started making edits. Once I'm done with everything and I hit save, my dashboard shows the second website, so now I can simply switch between the two websites whenever I want to change what I'm working on. No need to make multiple accounts. If you want to create a really sleek looking website, either for yourself or perhaps you're setting up a web shop like mine, check out squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash Ellen to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. That's it from me. Back to the video. Is this sun going to stay in? Because I would very much like to raise the light in here. I have a softbox off as well, by the way, which is just great. I love that. I cannot stop sweating. So yes, that's the aquarium anyway. Let's move on to a different topic. And hopefully that tree is not gonna get any worse. What else have we got? Oh, <laughs> I'm gonna talk about something really quickly, right? And I don't want anybody to sit there at home feeling really bad, okay? Please don't. But I wanted to talk very quickly about sort of my private life, you could say. A few people did ask about my love life, which is very sweet of you, by the way. And again, I will reiterate, I'm not taking it too offensively or anything like that. But I understand, obviously, the channel is slowly growing. I get more subscribers um, every month or whatever have you, and people have questions. And I understand there's a lot of other YouTubers that are more um, open about their private life and things like that. So again, I understand where you're coming from, but it was just to kind of answer the question of, you know, how's your love life? Um, are you pregnant as well? Now that one I do take slight offense to, actually. I don't think you should ask a woman if she's pregnant, personally. But I just wanted to reiterate that I'm not, I'm not open with my private life on here. Um, I don't think I ever will be. I've talked about this before. It's not really something I'm interested in at all. The whole pregnant thing? <laughs> I'm not pregnant, not that I need to tell anybody that. Um, maybe I was just bloated. And in fact, I know I was bloated that week. I was actually having a really tough week and I'd bloated up a lot. I was very self-conscious about it. And I had people asking me if I was pregnant um, on my, I think it might have been my last repot or something like that. Or it might not have even been the repot, it might have been something else, I can't remember. Please don't ask a woman that. It's, 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 just don't, just don't. Especially don't ask me that. I'm not pregnant. And if I was having a child, which I don't think I'm going to, I don't necessarily think I'd tell you. And I said that before in a video, and so many presumptuous people basically said, well, yeah, we would know because you would be pregnant and you would see it. And I will repeat what I said that time. It's very presumptuous of you to think that I would be the one pregnant. You don't know. And this is the thing, I'm, I'm a very private person. So my love life, depending on whether it's a him, a her or anything, that is completely private to me and that will stay that way. And it's nothing, that's not meant offensively to you guys, by the way. It's just people know enough. They don't, they don't need to know about that. I share quite a lot of my life. I've done less so recently, obviously. Um, but it's just part of my life that I don't really want on the internet. Same thing for like my parents, you know, my family, stuff like that. I don't really want that on the internet. I just don't, it's not my thing. Um, I don't think it's ever going to be either. So I'm not super offended you're asking. I understand new people come to the channel and they don't know what what I do and don't talk about. And that's totally fine. This is why I probably will repeat it every so often. But the pregnant thing, yeah, yeah, don't do that. Like, I have no plans to get pregnant ever. So it's highly unlikely I'm going to be pregnant. And again, if I was going to have a child, you have no idea whether I would be the pregnant one. So anyway, moving on. I um I just wanted to go over that real quick because I do get comments, messages, things like that every few months and I wait normally every few months to sort of reiterate, hey, you know, thank you, but no thank you kind of thing. Um, and you know what? If I had kids, I wouldn't put them on the internet either. I've got a lot of opinions on that, but that's not for this video because I do not have children. So there you go. Let me just push this in. I'm so hot today. I don't know if I look, do I look dewy? Kind of a little bit, right? It's not an ideal. It's really not ideal. Do I look healthy? Tell me I at least look healthy. Because I feel wet. 
it's not very nice. Right, anyway, I have this. I'm going to now snip through some roots because I see a little bit of the old roots it came in with. Not a lot, you see that? Just some that look a bit brown. So I'm just going to file through it really quickly, but it, it's very, very minimal because honestly, all of this root here is great. And I will say this time and time again, guys, it doesn't matter how good the roots are on a plant. When you get it in, it can rot. It can rot. Especially when you get it in like I do, and these things are in moss, and you stick them in lecker. The chance of the roots rotting is very, very, very high. I would say it's over 50%, by the way. The same thing when you put a plant in water when it arrives. Some plants will rot at the root, especially if the roots had too much shit. You know what I mean? It's dried out too much or it's had too much of an aggressive chemical on it. Those roots are probably going to rot. It's life. Um, so try not to get too hung up if it happens. It doesn't mean that your plant is absolutely dead if there's some rot on it. Like, look at this, for example. There is bits of rot. There is. Is this plant going to die? No, absolutely not. It's fine. We need to not baby plants as much. You've got to think, guys. These things live in the wild, right? Sorry, it's like a hitting the table. Oh, shut up, unit. If my unit is contracting in the heat. These things live in the wild. Do you think there's someone picking rot off them? No, not at all. These things can recover. Honestly, don't worry about it. It's not too bad. Uh, if it's all the roots, yeah, maybe start worrying. But if it's just bits and pieces, just seriously, just pick it off and get on with your day and it will be all right. I do have a video on root rot. I'll repeat that. There's a lot of people asking me about root rot. I do have a video on that and those steps in that video, which I will link for you in the description, they will help you out if you need a little bit of a, a, a walkthrough or a guide as to what to do with rot and why things rot, what, is it rot or not, what are the symptoms, blah, 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 blah. I do have that on there as a guide. So if you're interested, that is in the description of this video. There's some roots that have rotted here, but they're not very big. And compared to the rest of them, there's just nothing there, really. These are quite good. I think I'm going to pick this lecker off because it's quite a big piece. This pot is a little bit too big, but you know what? I think we're going to be all right, you know? I'm not too worried. Oh, there's a lovely rotted root coming right down. It must be in an old central rot. Central rot? Central root, even. He's lovely, though, isn't he? I refuse to sell him. I've decided to keep him for myself. He may go in the house. And that's actually part of a question that someone asked me that I would like to talk about as well. Because, what was the question? Plants in your house... And I've added on garden because I've done some thinking about the garden, actually. And it's a bit, not left field, but it's just something I really want to do. Plants in the house. I did put something on Instagram uh, the other day, basically saying, yo, what should I put in my house? I've yet to look through there, actually. I've been really busy. But essentially, soon I will be starting to pick the things I want in my house. And I'm not really any further forward with it. I just know that it will be plants that are quite low effort because I don't want to be spending my days off tending to all the plants in the house. I don't want to do that. I would like plants that don't necessarily require moss poles because I find moss poles really ugly. I just do. I don't mind the odd one when it merits it, but I don't really want a ton that are on poles. I just don't want to do it. So I'd rather have different levels of, you know, bushy plant. So I'm thinking of... I don't know if you heard that, but that was the plant falling over again. I'm going to try and ignore it. I cannot pick that up now. It's completely fallen over. I'm going to have to deal with that after this video. Fucking great. What was I saying? Anyway. Oh, God. That plant's ruined. What I was saying was, anything bushy. So I'm thinking about, like, maybe Anthurium Magnificum. I have a dark form. There's actually one here. You can't see it, can you? Eh, no, you can't. I've got one upstairs anyway, Magnificent Verde. Thinking about something like that. I'm thinking about some crawlers. As you know, I potted some crawlers up for the studio, but some of them are so good, I might have to not do that and put them in my house. Things like this. I don't actually know if this would ever need polling. I'm going to go out on a limb and say, no, it doesn't. I'm thinking about some alocasia as well. Um, bananas, palms, that kind of thing. I'm going to do things like um, Raphidophora tetrasperma, maybe in the bathroom, and let it bush and trail, not grow up. My Maranta will be back. Don't even worry about it. I can't wait for my Maranta to go back in. Probably one of each colour. I think that's kind of what I'm thinking at the moment, anyway, for the house. Where have I just put that? Now, the garden. The garden. Okay, so the garden will consist of some palm trees, okay? The ones that can grow in the UK. 
I want to cough again. It's really bad. And I don't think it's dust. I think it's COVID. Right. Some palm trees that can live in the UK. Probably want some of those in there. I've decided I really want ferns. So proper woodlandy looking ferns. I just want a huge undergrowth of those, probably around a border of the garden. I have plans for the rest of the garden, but it, I need to work them out later down the line. So I'll probably just be focusing on like a border around the edge and leave the rest of it. And then <laughs> I've come up with a wild idea and it makes no sense. But I would like to grow. And I saw these yesterday and I was kind of in love. Some artichokes, because they look amazing. And I want to grow some pumpkins, guys. I don't know. I don't know why. I don't know why. But I saw pumpkins growing yesterday. And I was just stupidly enamored. It was ridiculous. Now, Halloween is actually my favorite season. So maybe that's got something to do with it. Seriously. I was like a kid in a candy shop. It was ridiculous. It was ridiculous. So I would really, really like to grow some pumpkins. So I'm probably gonna have like palms in one corner, have some part of the garden in a clearing outdoors, not greenhouse, and try and grow some pumpkins and some artichokes. I just really wanna do it. I don't even know if I like pumpkin. I don't think I've tried it, but I will try because I'll be growing them and I think it's gonna be awesome. I realize this is so random, so random, but how cool would it be? I don't know anything about gardening, so gardening enthusiasts, you tell me. I would love a garden where it looks sort of all right all year round, but it has a particular pop in either spring or summer, but also autumn. I want a garden that looks really good when it gets chillier. So I need to kind of think about what I want to do there because I would love to have a really Halloween-y, autumnal looking garden, but more or less all year round, if I can. Um, I realize that's kind of ridiculous, talking about palm trees and pumpkins in the same category, but I really, really fancy it. So that's kind of what I'm gonna do. I know, I know, it's ridiculous, but I really wanna try it. So I'm just trying to see if I put too much pond in here. I don't think I have. As I said, I wanted to plant this a little bit higher up given that it's, it's not quite time for this. That's what I'm thinking for both plants for the house and those are my garden thoughts because I'm definitely having a hot tub in my garden when I can, but I want to put decking around it, but I can't do that yet, so that'll come later. So I just need to leave space for that, and then I'll go back and fill it in later. But that's kind of my plan. Quite excited about it. I'm unnaturally excited about it. I'm more excited about the pumpkins than anything else. Really weird, I know. I know. I don't even think I like artichokes, but you know what? I don't care. It's going to be cool. I can't wait. Right, is this going to solidify itself? Yes, sort of. Okay, a few minutes. So yeah, tell me what you think, by the way, in terms of plants for the house, or the garden as well, of course. Comment whatever you'd like to. Um, as I say, I, I'm not a gardening person. I know nothing at all. So apart from Ben helping me, I don't really know what I'm doing. I'm quite capable of inventing that. So if you have any ideas, on things, then that would be quite cool. But artichokes and pumpkins are definitely going to happen because I did go and see them in a garden in the UK and they were outside and everything was fine. So I know it'll work anyway, but that's kind of what I'm planning. He looks quite good, doesn't he? I've nearly actually got rid of all the pond. Not ideal. I have some more, but it's next door. I might line the second one with... Um, Maybe a little bit of lecca to bump it up at the bottom. That might work. So yeah, that's my thoughts. In terms of the Monstera, because this was a topic, I think it was in the last haul I did. I spoke about, yo, I want a variegated Monstera, but I don't know what exactly I'm looking for. So in terms of that, I still don't know. And I've almost thought to myself, maybe this is the time where I actually do use a pool, which would mean that I opted for a small form Monstera, which maybe it would be a mint. I don't know. Um... Because that one, that mint monster I have, it is small form, pretty sure anyway. So I don't know. because I just, I have a weird concern about any large form and just tearing up my house. I don't know. I think I'd have to see when I got in there and I put my furniture in there, how much space there is. Because if I put a large form, say in the corner, I can't really, it would, it would affect how many plants I can put in there around it, obviously, because it's huge. So I need to think about that. If I wanted more plants in, then the answer would be to go for a small form of some description. Um, because obviously it would grow upwards and it would be on a pole and it would... Can you see that one there? Yeah, that one's looking a bit worse for where it needs cut down and start again. But you'd get that effect instead. So that's an elbow, by the way. 
So I could get something more like that, or large form, which if anyone's owned a large form, they'll understand how ridiculous they are. So I'm not sure what to do. Again, if you have any further thoughts on that, then let me know. But that's kind of where I'm at with the whole house stuff. Right. I think he looks really pretty. Unfortunately, his newest leaf isn't that variegated, but it's got so much variegation in here. I'm not really worried. But if I just tilt him, you see how cute he looks? Isn't he lovely? So what we do with this is, here is his pot. He is a bit grubby, but we just put his pot in like that. And he is now fully capable of growing upstairs, growing down here. I'm probably going to keep him down here. Look how pretty he is. <gasps> that is so fucking nice. <gasps> so he's probably going to stay down here anyway. Um, but we'll see how it goes. You know what it is? I'm going to brighten this camera up, guys. It's really, really, really annoying me. See, this probably looks good now, but then when the sun comes out, I'm going to get blown out. But I, I think I prefer that, don't you? So we're going to keep it like that. I've taken my bloody glove off. I'm not going to back on now. Oh, for God's sakes. Right, let's put him down because he's cute, but we're done with him. Next topic. Okay, uh, Monstera Sports and Prices. Someone asked me about them. I'm actually doing a video on it and it's getting planned this week. So it will come out within the next month because, again, somebody else asked, what have you got coming out soon? That is the answer. I'll be doing a video on different sports of Monstera uh, within reason and telling you a bit about them, whether they're large, whether they're small, blah, blah, blah. I've also got a video that's being planned on being able to tell the difference between large and small as well. So those things are being planned and those things are in the woodworks. So I'm not going to talk about them now, but I thought it was a good time to do that video because I have a few sports now. I don't have a ton, don't get me wrong, but I have at least 50% of the plants I'd like to talk about. So I'm going to be doing that. You will see pictures of all the sports and no, it might not be every sport under the sun because it's very difficult to tell. And I mentioned this in last week's video, talking about plants with silly names. You know what I mean? So you will be getting that and it is coming. I just need to plan it this week. So I'm gonna not say any more on that. Uh, fertilizer update. Sorry, this is gonna take a while to get through. Fertilizer update. This, this, this bad boy here is hopefully the last batch, the last iteration of my fertilizer. Very exciting. When I first talked to you guys about this, I told you that I'd taken an experiment where I took different plants, just say a tray of plants of different types. So I think I had Syngonium, it was either Aurea or Albo in there. I had Crystallinum in there. I had a Monstera Aurea as well in there. I had a few different plants. I had Gloriosum, that was a great one. I had Monstera Eskeleto. And I compared my feed to the leading competitor feed. And as you may know, if you saw that repot with me, the results were pretty insane. I will reinsert them for you now. Only a couple of pictures because I showed you more in that old video, not to cover all ground, but I did that. So given that that was actually the old batch and it didn't even have the additives that I put in this one, which you'll find out when it's released. There's a lot of good shit in here. It didn't even have that in there and it, f it just performed flawlessly on the test. So what we've now done is we've got our last iteration of all the extras that we put in it. And what can you see it behind me? Mm -hmm, you can. See this? This right here is, I think this one could be the competitor feed. There's another shelf next to it that is a control with just water. So it's having no feed. The one next to that is my feed. And these get rotated and they get rinsed out every two weeks. Um, the trays get scrubbed and they get refed with whatever dose they are, um, you know, required to be dosed at. Because the competitive feed, you don't need much. Mine, I've changed it, but anyway, not relevant. So what I've done is I've taken three samples of plant. In a lot of cases, the plants are genetically identical because, for example, I've taken baby gloriosum and I've taken three off the same chunk. They're the same size, they have the same root mass. I've taken pictures of this, by the way, and I've plotted, I've potted, sorry, I've potted them up separately in each single thing. They're in the same locations in the pots, just so when I look at them, I can see the differences. And that is that. One for competitor, one for control, one for mine. And I'm gonna run the experiment for, I think it could be 12 weeks, some, somewhere around that anyway. And I'm going to record the results. I can see some results already, not just with growth, but with what happens to the water when it is sat there. 
I have noticed this and I will divulge a little bit. Again, you will see this when it's finished, but the control has algae growing in it already. This is, remember, this is just two weeks. The competitor has not just algae in it, but it's got a really nasty sediment and it's not very nice. And mine doesn't seem to be doing that at all. And to make sure that that is what I'm experiencing, I have a separate experiment running right now with some of the feed with water in separate vials. They're actually tissue culture vials, so they're completely sterile. And they have been left open under a grow light over there in the shop. And I'm testing them just to see what happens with algae alone, without anything else. I want to see how quickly the solution gets algae on it. And can I see them now? No, they're too far up. I can't even actually see how they're doing. I'd have to go up the ladders and over. But I'm noticing some results with those as well. So that is your feed update. I can't tell you anything else other than I'm putting my money where my mouth is and I'm repeating that experiment with the latest and final formula. And I'm going to see what the results are. I'm documenting the the experiment, photographically that is, and we're going to see what happens. And of course, you will find out in due course. And that's about it. I can't tell you anything else. Obviously, the feed isn't released, but I'm hard at work on it. But you'll find out what you need to find out when it's ready. So I do have friends testing this feed, and I'm actually sending this feed overseas for other nurseries that I'm quite pally with to test as well. So I'm going to have growers in Thailand also testing this feed, which is very exciting because I want to see how it works for them in their environment. That is very, very exciting. So I'm going to shut up. I'm going to say too much, but that's the feed situation. So, right. Next topic. Oh, there's so many. There's so many. Uh, let me cross off what I've actually talked about, guys, because there's so much. You know me, I like to leave the meatier stuff towards the end, so I'm going to do that. Work-life balance in the new house, someone asked me about. And honestly, everyone that knows me says this same thing to me. And I'm sure a few of you that do know me will be chuckling right now. But I have a big issue with work-life balance. Not gonna lie. Um, I am hoping that the new house sort of fixes that. I'm hoping that when I move in, I can make more content at home for starters. How good would that be? When I move house and I get everything sort of decorated and settled so it won't be straight away. You should be seeing a lot of content at the house and talking about my plants at home. All of the stuff that I used to do ages ago that I haven't been able to do. So you will see a lot of that. I realize this isn't quite the answer to your question. How bad is that? Talk about your work-life balance and then proceed to just talk about work. I see what I did there. Because I can do more content at home, the, the, the workflow will be faster because I can set up, film, immediately edit, get it out, done, cool, awesome. I can film more impromptu videos. I can start doing more stuff on Instagram. I could even do TikTok if I wanted to. I can do a lot of things once I have a house that I can't do here. So I honestly think it will lead to me being more active on social media, but my balance will also get better. That is my theory because I'm putting a lot of energy into this house so that when I'm not working, that house is basically what I would refer to as a kind of zen, zen den. Would that make any sense? For example, in my living room, I'm already planning to have like a reading nook in the corner, trying to make it really cozy and trying to make sure the color palettes are all really calming. I just want it to be that I'm really, really relaxed in that house and it's very easy for me to switch off and everything else. I've got a lovely big kitchen in the house, so in terms of my fitness and my diet and stuff, that's going to help it massively. That's going to be amazing. I can't quantify it too much. I just know that it will probably get better, but it will get worse before it gets better because I will be moving in probably by, well, not moving in. I'll probably get the keys by the end of September because people are asking me any, any news. That's the official date is the 30th of September, but I've been told that might likely get moved more, to, I don't know it's forward or back, more towards now. So it might be mid-September, but obviously I have to do things in the house. I have to put a floor down. I have to get beds, sofas, things like that. So it will take a little bit of time. And during that time, I would ask kindly that you forgive any content that comes out because I won't be able to put a ton of effort in necessarily, at least for maybe a month till it stabilizes. But I should get into a position where I can do more relaxed content. I can do better content. I'm feeling better. Even my second channel can fire up as well because it'll be much easier to do. And it's just going to be an all-around good chilled time because I love this place, but I'm sick of doing videos in here. 
Do you know what I mean? It is a nightmare to film in here. I'm practically, my skin is dropping off right now. It's so hot. That's kind of how I think it's going to go. I think I'll have a lot more me time. I've got my own space. Everything's in its place. I command my free time. It's just going to be awesome. And I'm really, really excited for it. And if I manage to get a hot tub, then trust me, I'll be having a lot more days off. Trust me. So that's kind of the answer anyway. I can't quantify it totally, but that's kind of the answer. Right, I'm going to pour this out and we're just going to see what this situation is with the roots. So, fingers crossed, because this little guy is reaching, you see, he is reaching the end of the pot here. So he kind of needs to, can you see there? Yeah. He's reaching the end of the pot, so he needs to be depotted, repotted. What on earth? Right. Before we do another question, I'm just going to focus on this, given that this plant costs too much. So, just gently start tipping it. Oh. And it's starting to move itself, so I'm going to grab that. Okay, okay. No, this is okay. This is okay. There's no rot. This is good. This is what you would hope to see. <laughs> That's good. That's okay. Check it out. Yeah, I'm happy with that. I'm really happy with that. Okay. So he doesn't need anything done to him. He can just get potted up straight away. And I am actually going to use this pond again. And I know people get really weird about reusing stuff. But the only thing with pond is, as long as it's clean, it's fine. There's slow release fertilizer in there, but I don't rely on it at all because it's a bit shit. There's hardly anything in there. So it doesn't bother me at all. It'll get rinsed. It'll go back in. If I need a top up, which I will need a bit looking at this because it's the same size, then I will get some fresh and it will all get rinsed out and it will be all fine. But I am not worried in the slightest. There's no rot on there. That's all nice and solid. This is good. This is good. So I'm going to put some in here first. Pop him down gently. Can you imagine? I'll get a question before I do this. So, well, I hope I do have a work-life balance anyway. I will work my hardest to make sure I have a balance. That don't sound good either, does it? No wonder everyone has a problem with me and my work-life balance. Anyway, okay. I'm going to talk about something that's arguably more serious, but I really want to talk to you guys about it because I'm, I'm kind of, I'm in between a rock and a hard place here and... <sighs> I don't fully know what I'm going to do yet. I think I, I think I do, but I'm in a bit of a situation here with a supplier and I would like to tell you about the situation sort of and get, not really get feedback. It's, you know what it is. I'm really just trying to issue a warning that I'm probably going to do something here and this video may be sent to that supplier. So just to keep everyone on total transparency, that's what's going to happen. I'm in disagreements with a supplier at the minute and they should probably see this video because I don't want to be treated how they've tre me, treated me even. And I'm hoping that upon seeing this video, they might choose to do the right thing and then no one has to know and we can all just move on with our lives and do the right thing and carry on with life, right? So I'm not going to reveal the identity of this supply when I talk about them. That is for the next video if they do not give me my money back, okay? Now... I've really thought about this long and hard and it's not something I have really done before but there's a lot of times I've had issues with suppliers and I've never spoke up about it and there will be people buying from this supplier that can't necessarily financially recover if this supplier turns around and decides not to send a plant and not to give the money back. So I've thought about it and I, I feel like the only way to stop suppliers, as we say in England, taking the piss. This is probably the only way. I'm not out to get anybody or anything like that. I just, I'm just kind of sick of it, guys. I've been scammed a few times, but that's not what this is. And I will explain that. It's not a scam as such. It's just a, a disagreement. And I personally think that I'm in the right and they are in the wrong. And I'll go into it. But I'm making this part of this video now with full expectation it's going to that supplier in question. And you can make a decision on what you'd like to do. If you don't do the right thing and refund me, I'm going to make another one of these videos and I will be telling everyone who you are as a supplier. Um, no personal information, obviously. I'm not, not about that, so don't get it twisted. Um, but you will be known as the supplier that has done this. So other people can avoid this happening to them because I don't think it's right. So what happened? The story is quite simple, guys. Hang on. I'm going to put some of this in here. I think I'm going to pour it in. So I want to get these bits done because it's noisy and I don't want to have difficulty talking over it. So you might have even seen it on the Rare Plant Shop's Instagram a while ago, but basically I bought in some big 
can't remember if they were alocasia or collocasia now. I can't remember, actually. But some big plants, anyway. It's a super simple story, guys, so I'm not going to, you know, get right into it. If the supplier doesn't take the right course of action, I will go into it then. But essentially, I order a very large plant. And what happens is you order a large plant from your supplier, you get phytosanitary documentation with it. The plant is inspected in their country. They get the documentation. It is sent over. It get it comes into the English border. It gets inspected. If it passes inspection, it is released to me. I have to pay import tax and blah, 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 but it comes to me and that is fine. Now, let me tell you a little bit about the conditions that I accept um, as not my fault, but just things that I will take on the chin. Now, my general rule is, and this actually is the same with my customers, okay? As long as the plant gets to my doorstep, if it dies because it's been delayed or whatever else, providing the reason for the delay wasn't because they did something wrong, I will take that on the chin. So if I spend £3,000 on a plant and it comes in and, you know, I don't know, it's, a, it's an allocation, whatever it is, and it just dies. Or the bananas here, these are not doing so well, but if you can see, one of them might be dead. One of them's okay. One of them's doing arguably the best. But say these died. I'm not going to come for the supplier. And I've said this a lot on my videos. I've said this a lot. I am not coming for the supplier. They did their job. I paid the money. They did their documentation. They got it inspected. Everything was fine. It came to my side. My side inspected it. Didn't reject it. It came to me. If it died, that's just the perils of importing. And I say this to everybody. This is why we have the classic, do you import yourself or do you buy from a shop debate? Okay. And I have covered this in a video. It's called The Journey of a Rare Plant. It covers the pros and cons of shops, private sellers, um, importing directly. If you'd like to know about that, watch the video that's linked down below. It will be very obvious. It'll be labeled. But that's just one of these things. If you want to buy from a shop, generally speaking, you pay a higher price, but your purchases or should be protected, right? For example, if a, and this has happened very recently, actually, I think it might be a Monstera Aurea. It's something, actually. It might be a tie, but... There's sometimes my plants get stuck in customs when they go to US. What happens is the company, I suspect it's UPS, pull off the phyto and they carry on with the box. So if they pulled it off leaving the UK, they've gone, right, that's cool. Sometimes they pull that phyto off the box and it gets to the other end. It doesn't have a phytosanitary certificate on it anymore. Customer gets really annoyed. They think that we haven't done that and we have. But what's happened is the curry has pulled it off the box. This doesn't happen all the time, but sometimes it happens. My point is, if that happens, that customer is still absolutely protected by me. If the plant doesn't get to you, you are protected. And when the plant does, when the plant, I can't speak today, when the plant does get to you, I have my guarantee that covers you for a period of time. If anything happens, we deal with it, we work through it. Okay, that is the T. I operate by these same rules, all right? I bought said plant to try and shorten this because I don't want to drag it out but I just want to make sure I explain enough so that people understand. Give me one minute. I need to get some of this out. Sorry, I realized that's ugly as shit and we are overexposed, but hopefully it'll just go down. You'll deal with it, it'll be fine. So I bought said plant. It got inspected, it got a phyto, it came to the UK and they pulled it for inspection again, possibly due to the fact it was a large box. They like to do that. Generally, smaller boxes tend not to be inspected as much. I don't know why, they just do. But this got inspected. It got pulled back because uh, basically biological life was found on the plant. It got fully inspected. What they do is they pull it, they go, that's not allowed to go through. We're going to book an inspection on that with the lab. We're going to send off whatever to the lab. And basically, they found an ant on the plant. So once that happens, by the way, sometimes the plants are sent back to the original person. Sometimes they are simply destroyed. This happened to me last year, and I may have told you about it with a supplier of mine. It happened twice, actually. Um, what happened was there was some Syngonium came in, and there was, I can't remember what kind of pest it was. Obviously, they've, they've been phytoed in Thailand. They've come in, and they have had something on them. I think it was some kind of egg or live young of an insect or something. And they wouldn't let it in. They destroyed all the plants, about 10,000 pounds worth of plants. That was awesome. It, don't get me wrong, it was shit for me and it was shit for the supplier. But anyway, that happens. Sometimes they'll send it back. I don't really know what the rules are on sending back, not sending back. 
I don't even think APHA knows. I'm going to be honest. It seems to happen very different each time. And if you've had these problems, you will know the same. They seem to make it up as they go along. Anyway, it got sent back to the supplier. So we didn't get it. We notified them. Hey, by the way, it hasn't come through. It has, it has, um, we'll not say pests, biological life on it, which is absolutely prohibited. It's got to go back. Bear in mind, it shouldn't have had biological life on it because it was inspected in the other end, in the other country, Thailand, Indonesia, whatever. So we notified them. It had to go back. And I believe DHL had the parcel. Long story very short, that parcel goes missing on the way back. DHL do not know where it is. It's never come to us, and we have proof it's never come to us because it wasn't allowed to clear entry into the country. So it was on its way back. What this supplier has done is, and I understand how they feel, I'm not pretending I don't empathize with you because I go through this all the time with my shop, okay? So if you're watching this, I do understand your point of view, I just don't think it's right. It's just not, you can't work like that. You just can't in this line of business. So oh, I need to breathe. I need to breathe. I'm getting really hot, guys. I think it's about 30 degrees now, is it? Yep, literally 30 degrees. Okay. So said to them, you know, this is going to have to come back. And what, you know, if it gets back to you, can you try again? You can either rehab it, whatever, cut all the foliage off if you have to do whatever you do and send it back. Uh, we were prepared to do that. Or refund us, we'll, we'll come to a, a conclusion on that. Well, let's, let's keep it open. Let's just see what happens when you get it back. They have not got it back because DHL has lost that parcel. However, they are now refusing to send a replacement plant, of which they definitely have, and they're refusing to refund me. And I take issue with that because as far as I'm concerned, the book stops with the other party until it clears customs in the UK. Once it has cleared customs in the UK, it is my responsibility. And I do accept that to any of my suppliers know this. They've dealt with me for long enough. Sorry, that's my wall coming on. Very annoying. It'll only be a minute. I'm going to pop this up in silence while that happens. So I accept that that's, that's the, the tea, really. That's how it is. It is absolutely their responsibility until it comes into this country. If it comes into this country and it gets lost by our local courier, say, for example, goes on a lorry and it goes missing, that's on me. Because the supplier did everything they needed to do. They got it into my country. That's all you can ask when you order from overseas. And it's the same thing when you order from my shop. It has to get to you, right? Or I'm liable. So I do expect the same thing the other way around because I'm very, very, very tolerable about the state plants coming in and everything. I know a lot of other shops aren't. I'm not trying to out anybody, but I know y'all aren't because I deal with half of you anyway, right? A lot of the times, other shops, if stuff comes in and say, you order 20 plants and one dies, you'll be on to your supplier saying, one's dead, replace it. I don't even operate like that. And I'm not here to pass judgment on anybody else. I'm saying I don't operate like that. If that happened, it's dead. If I order 10 Glory Awesomes in, five don't make it, well, shit, that's just the perils of importing, and I accept that. But I have to accept that it gets here. So anyway, I knew I'd end up running about this, but I'm, I'm pretty annoyed about it. You know what I mean? I just expect people to act with some integrity. So the, the supplier anyway refuses to replace or refund. They just refuse everything. And as far as I'm concerned, the book still stops with them. I have not got my plant. I didn't come close to getting my plant. It wasn't allowed into the UK. It bounced. I should be able to get my money back for that. So, again, the purpose of me saying this, whether some of you agree with it or not, I don't care. I see people do this all the time. And you know what? I am in a position to protect people's wallets if this person just operates this way. I don't know. I haven't done any digging into them. And if anybody else has any issues with them, I don't know. But it's not the way to operate. And it comes a point where... I can be gracious and say nothing, and I, I usually do. You guys know that. Um, you know, when I do dish the dirts and stuff like that, I do protect the identity of the people. But it does get to a point, and you have to sit there and go, right, where's the line? W what point do I keep protecting people? I don't know. Do you know what I mean? So I'm making a decision on it now because I'm sick of being fucked around by people. I want my money back or a replacement, it is up to you. We can talk about it. I'm quite open to whether it's a replacement or just a refund. That's fine. 
not a problem. If it's a money issue, we can do it in installments. That's not a problem. Again, I'm not trying to be a dickhead here, but what I will not accept is no money back at all because that's not right. Now, I'm not calling you a scammer before people start spreading that around from watching this. I'm not. It's not a scam. That's not what this was. So I just want to differentiate that now. But it is very improper behavior as a supplier, and I don't think it's right that I protect you from other people going through this and have them not protected as a result. Because where I can recoup the cost of this happening, and I shouldn't have to, other people can't. It's a lot of money. It's at a time where we're still watching money. We're still trying to do the best for investments and everything else. I'm not having it. I'm not having it. And this goes to any future supplier as well. So if you're thinking about fucking me over, please don't. So sorry to be like that, guys, but it's the only way to actually tell the person. Because if you think I haven't tried to solve this privately, I have, and they are seemingly ignoring me. So I feel like this is the only thing I can do to get your attention. So please, I'm very, very, very willing to be flexible on this. Very, very willing. But what I am not willing to do is let you take my money and essentially ignore me, block me, make off with it. It's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. So I'm going to leave that there. This will probably be sent to the person, full transparency for everyone watching. You can have your own opinion on it if you want, but at the end of the day, guys, it's not your money. It's not you being fucked around. You're not in the position I am where I need to make some decision on, on what this means for someone else. Do you know what I mean? I don't want to make the wrong decision. So I'm making a decision on it. I'm being assertive. This is the tea. So I'd very much like it if that person could come to me, do the right thing. Just do the right thing. You have plenty of time. You have about a week or something like that before I actually do something about this. So don't panic. Just have a think about it. Go speak to other suppliers, see what they would do. Whatever you want to do, go do that. But that's my terms. That's what I'm doing. And I'm doing this because you keep ignoring me and there is no other way to get your attention but to do this. So please, please, please do the right thing. I am flexible. I don't want this to go any further. And it won't go any further if you just sort this out with me like an adult and like a professional person. So please do. And on that note, we are kind of done with this. It looks a bit, I don't know. I don't know. Did it crawl like that before? I don't remember that doing that. Did it? It probably did. Can you see that? It's just sort of flopping around. So he was relatively easy, by the way. I have potted him more towards this side of the pot where my thumb is, and that's because it's a crawler and it's going to crawl along. So we need to give it as much room as possible. It's not super secure. I'm going to be honest, but I don't want to wedge it in. So where's his little outer pot? Here it is. Here it is. Pop that in there. Guys, guys. Am I glistening yet? Ooh, I feel like I am. Right, pop that in there. Good Lord, I'm hot. Right. Last plant, okay. I'm gonna throw a curveball at you because I'm gonna use a slightly different substrate that I'm experimenting with and I will get onto that. Let me just tidy this up because it's a bit grim, isn't it? Honestly, guys, I don't want you to think I'm a big bully for all of that, but the, the, there has to be a line somewhere, right? There just has to be. There just has to be. I can't be branded a bully every time I say something that just needs to put someone in their place. I can't be, I refuse to. I don't condone bullying of the sort. But you have to draw a line, don't you? You really do. Right, why is my watch going off? Voicemail. Ooh, let's ignore that. Right, I'm gonna take this out. I'm gonna see how these pups are doing before we continue with another topic. So, oh, there's water everywhere. This should be good. It's not been potted long, to be honest, so I, I'm not expecting to see growth. Maybe in a couple of weeks, so... Ooh, we might be separating some of these up, actually. Give me a minute. Shake that off. Let's have a little look, shall we? I can't really show you what I'm about to do, and hopefully it doesn't fail. Oh, there's another pop coming in. Yes! There is... Can you see this? There is here some roots coming out of the base of this, so I'm just going to try and make literally incisions at the base of this. I totally appreciate this is not very visible, but I'm going to be sort of cutting down here on either side. That's what I'm going to do. I really can't show you this, guys. This is a bit too difficult. <sighs> Next topic. Horse. Horse. Yes, I did leave it till the end. Horse. So, I did get a response from the seller, shall we say. It's nothing you're not expecting me to tell you. Can I just say that? Let me just make this incision because I don't feel like I can concentrate enough. Oh, there we go. That was quite easy, actually. We like that. 
It's not a lot of root though. I kind of wish I hadn't done that. Maybe it'll be okay. I should have left that pop on. I'm an idiot. Never mind. You know what? I'm only going to take that off because what's going to happen is if I do this wrong and that shit dies, they all might die. So I'm actually going to leave it. I'm going to leave it and I'm going to let it pop. And if that dies, then that is genuinely very upsetting, but we'll just see how it goes. I'm going to pop this back up now. Hopefully it'll be fine. I don't know. Do that. Yeah, so force. Nothing you weren't expecting. Um, it, it's really weird because what this seller likes to do, and I, I couldn't give a shit if she's watching, by the way, guys. I really couldn't. What this seller likes to do is, if you catch her out on something, it's usually the, the true bits. <clears throat> she won't actually acknowledge you've said anything. It's really weird. She'll just ignore it completely. And I say she, obviously her solicitor wrote this on her behalf, but it's the same thing, right? My solicitor is me, her solicitor is her. So if I say me and her, that's what I mean. The, the, um, the, the correspondence, that's the word I'm looking for, is solicitor to solicitor. It's kept professional. But the jumping thing, if you remember, right? This pony has competed in, I think it was 14 competitions with the son of this woman who had the pony and he was eliminated in about eight of them. So not so much of a jumping machine that he was advertised to be. But the seller, literally no response. No respect, totally ignoring it. Basically, let me just get this in here without hopefully making a big mess. Uh, right, we're just gonna go for that. We're gonna go for that. I will label that at the end. But anyway, so yeah, no response. No response at all to the jumping thing. Just literally just, just fuck all, just didn't happen. You didn't say it, don't know about it. it really, really weird. She took a look at the statements from the my livery owner who is just, oh, he, I'm not going to sing his praises anymore. He's amazing. Um, and just kind of accused him of him being the one that's done it, which is, it's kind of textbook, really. I mean, what else are they going to try and do? So that was another thing. Um, accused the horse of not having enough turnout, which I think is so funny. She basically made the accusation of, yeah, well, you're saying there because we basically covered his winter regime and his current regime because now he's out in the field all the time. He's fat as hell. It's great. She was basically saying that the, the winter regime that the pony was on when it was winter with us, because remember I got him in November, he wasn't turned out enough because he was out, I think it's something like six hours a day or something like that. Might have been four, not sure. Can't remember. So don't quote me on it. But it's funny, and I don't know why she would contest that and say, well, obviously it's us, because we have written evidence of asking her when the behaviours started to go wrong in the stable and everything else, when we started to see who the horse really was, the first thing we said was, yo, turn out, what's been happening? And she said something to the effect of, not precise words, may not be correct, I have to say that legally, um, he's been out maybe two hours every third day because we don't really have grass turnout here. So already he was getting more. So the fact that she would accuse him of not having enough turnout is like, it's not just dumb at this point, it's kind of lazy. Like the whole response, because I got the response through and I, I kind of had Ben read it at the same time as me anyway. And we both kind of said like, do you feel that that was a bit lazy? Like the whole response? And he was like, yeah, it's basically just, couldn't even be bothered to tell you why you had to go fuck yourself. They just basically told you to go fuck yourself. So I thought that was really interesting and that was really dumb of them to do. She's doubled down on the fact that her son is a novice. Uh, even though he is literally a show jumper and well, not a novice. I mean, I can't show jump, but never mind. She doubled down on that. And it was basically like, you know, your claim asserts that just because we bought him for X thousand and sold him for X thousand, you know, a short time later, that doesn't constitute a profit. Um, and they're basically saying it doesn't constitute a profit. I'm pretty sure I could argue that one quite well in a court of law that it does, but even then, basically saying just generic shitty statements, guys. They didn't try. Like when I sent my letter to them, we would say, your claim um, of this, say the jumping, is wrong because of this. Here's our evidence. We're explaining why. Because the whole idea is to try and settle this out of court, just to go, hey, you're fucked. Let's just sort this out. We don't want to go any further. Just sort it out so that we would... We would say, we would pull her point apart, a bit like what you would on, not cross-examination, but you get my point, it's, it's very, there's steps to follow. Her point, take it, dismantle it, tell her how we got there, show her the proof, bosh. Shouldn't do any of that, of course. Why? Maybe, 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 just maybe, because she's actually the one in the wrong. Just maybe, guys. But anyway, 
she would basically say stuff like, um, you know, your claim relies on the fact that my client misrepresented the horse when she absolutely did not. No explanation, no evidence, no nothing, can I just say. Literally, it was that simple. Obviously, the letter was about two pages, but there was no, there was nothing to back up the assertion at all. Nothing at all. I found that really odd. And the best way I can describe it, guys, is laziness. It's like you're refuting it, but you, you fully, you don't care that you go into court, really. They can't do. And to be honest, I half expected that due to the amount of money that they have and the amount of wealth they have, which I did touch on this in a previous update. These people are multi, multi-millionaires. Like, I would never see that money in my lifetime. I would love to see that money in my lifetime, but I don't think it's ever in scope. Do you know what I mean? A lot of money. Big, big money. They live in a mansion, swimming pool, huge grounds, um, their own arena. Literally, guys, they've got enough. You know what I'm saying? Um, so I kind of predicted that... Sorry, my phone keeps going off. <laughs> That's quite a funny text. Anyway... <laughs> Um, where was I? Uh, that's distracted me. Hang on. Yeah, so I'm, I'm back in the room. So that's why I thought they would be fine to go to court because for them it's kind of pennies. And if they really do think that they're going to win, which they seem to, they're probably just thinking, well, obviously, if I lost, I would have to pay their costs. And that is a consideration if I went to court. So... Due to the amount of wealth they have, it doesn't surprise me that they've said, fuck you. I just thought at this point they would try and either intimidate or give reasons to why I would fail. Because that's normally what kind of happens, because that's what we're doing. Um, but there's none of it. It's just, it's, it's pointless statements, really, because there's no weight behind them. You know, you're saying that it's, it essentially amounts to, like, you're saying she did this, but she didn't. And I know you're probably thinking, well, how can you prove you didn't do something? We have to do that all the time in a court of law. Do you know what I mean? You have to do that all the time in a court of law. Uh, how do you prove you didn't lie? How do you prove you didn't kill someone? How do you prove you didn't steal something? Like, you have to prove that. Um, I, I just find it a little bit odd that there was no, no real effort, really. It was very generic. I expected her to come back with, given that I'd given some witness statements. I haven't got all of them yet, but I will. My horse friend needs to do one, which I need to get on that. I expected her to kind of come back with her own witness statements going, yeah, well, check this out. I've got all of these people that are going to say this. But there's nothing. Um, I spoke to Ben about it because I can understand some facets of it, but not others. But Ben's basically said, yeah, but think about it. Why bother wasting the time now on the witness statements when if you're going to take them to court, we'll just tackle it then. They don't care. They don't care. This is like, this is like us fighting over a dollar when we have 10,000 in the bank right? Something like that. It's just, it's just so inconsequential to them. So normally I like to think that I'm very good at predicting people's movements and reactions, but with these guys I can't because their, their whole definition of life and the value they place on different things in life is so not on a barometer that I'm ever familiar with. I can't really rationalize it. And I'm not the only one that's thought that way as well. So it's a bit difficult. Ugh, there were some stupid statements. I think that they signed off because they normally signed off. They normally sign off with like their best fuck you that they have. And it's normally sarky. Because the last one, if you remember, it was like, go in, enjoy your horse. This one was something along the lines of, um, our position is as clear as, you know, the WhatsApp messages that we sent you like way before I started litigation, like in December. Um, we suggest that your client reflects on these. It's just like, it's just so, to me personally, it comes off as unprofessional, to be honest, because the, the tone is very sarky, and I've, long story short, I've been privy to a lot of uh, other people's solicitor stuff over the past couple of years, so I've, I've actually come to understand very well how solicitors interact with um, non-solicitors and solicitors. Like, I, I actually kind of get it. Like, I've seen a lot of stuff, and it's very atypical of how a solicitor would write. Now, they are solicitors. They have real solicitors and everything else. But that, I just want that to let you know that like, the level of laziness that these people seem to have. I suspect that there are, their solicitors on a retainer for like their businesses or whatever. And they're not, they're not even trying guys. They're not even trying. Because just to make a silly assertion, like, you know, obviously it's because there's not enough turnout when, if they'd known, they knew that they told us that 
the horse had less turnout with them. Just stupid shit like that. Like, come on, man. Put some effort in at least. The thing is, and I said this to Ben the other day, the problem you've got when someone has nothing to lose, and this has been demonstrated publicly recently on a very, very famous trial, when one person has nothing to lose, one person has everything to lose, they behave slightly differently. And if you've got everything to lose, you're going to really put more graft in, right? Because I lack the financials and everything else, and this, this money means a lot to me. And the only, the only way that I wouldn't go through with this is if my solicitor said, and we do need to have that conversation, how likely is it that I would win in court? We haven't had that conversation yet. She said likely, but she hasn't given me a percentage. She promised me after this letter we would meet and she would give me those percentages so then I can make a decision. But because I have a lot to lose financially, it's a life-changing amount of money because I've gone into debt for this. Because that is the case, I am far more likely to be proactive about it, to get the witnesses, to do whatever else I need to do in order to ensure that I win it. It's mad to me that they don't have that, but I think that's on my side, if you know what I'm saying. So... What's going to happen now, you may be asking. Give me two seconds. Do I want to put liquor in there? Eh, no, I'm just going to use my own substrate. I say my own substrate. I'm, I'm playing with substrate, okay, at the minute, because there's some things about porn I don't like. I'm, I'm doing some stuff. You see, you see what I'm saying? So I'm coming up with my own substrate, and I'm playing around for a while, and this is what I've got so far. It is too chunky, and I know it's too chunky. Maybe, maybe not for every plant. I think Anthurium would love this, but... I'm playing around with it. So we're going to try this in it. I did not want to put the uh, the variegated Gloriosum in it because it's a fucking variegated Gloriosum. Do you know what I mean? But I'm going to put this in. So sorry if it gets a little bit noisy. I'm just going to line the bottom with it. I don't even think I can dig a container in here. It's another reason why I'm wearing these gloves today. I know I forego them a lot, but not today. So yeah, that's kind of it. I wish I could quote to you most of the letter. I wonder if I can. Not quote to you, but... Let me just have a little look. Da, 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 da. Right, here we go. Let me have a, just a scan. So give me one moment, guys. What have we got? What have we got? Yep. So they asked us for some things that we did not send. If any of you remember, I may have mentioned that they asked me for chats between me and Ben, chats between me and my horse friend, private chats that had nothing to do with anything that I legally don't have to provide. They basically doubled down and said, hi, you didn't send us what we asked for. You must. I don't have to, by the way, it's my legal right. If I'm not relying on evidence in court and it's not even related to the subject, so example, they want chats between me and Ben from around that time, but if me and Ben never had chats about the horse, I don't have to provide my personal chats. It's client privilege, right? But that's what they're banging on about anyway. So I didn't do that, rightfully, and they basically reinforced that they want that. They instead went, well, you've sent us things we didn't even ask for, even though we send them show jumping records, we send them witness statements, we sent them veterinary records to prove that he hasn't had any illnesses since he was in my care, um, things like that. So they're complaining about that. Um, again, they've, they've, they've said that my entire claim can be summarized in, in basically two points, and they've labeled the two points, uh, which is basically I should be entitled to relief from misrepresentation and that they may or may not be a dealer. That's up to a judge, that's not up to us. They go into the Consumer Rights Act, which if you've seen my latest Dish the Dirt, you'll know all about, basically just saying that they're not a trader or it's not their craft. Because that's another thing that I talked about last time. Again, misrepresentation, that they viewed the letter, um, the son is a novice. Keep listing how much the son weighs, which is really weird. I don't know why they keep doing that, but they keep writing his weight down. And they're basically saying, look, it's it's one of the same things that they've been saying the whole time, which is, look, I would not put my tiny son on it, on this horse, if he was bad. I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't do that. And it's like, aha, uh -huh. but that's kind of our point. You had this horse two months. So we are alleging that, no, he was bad. And that's why you got shot of him very quickly, because you knew that you couldn't have your son on him and you didn't. So it's, it's basically that, guys. I wish it was juicier for you, but honestly, it's quite um, lazy. I mean, the first one was lazy as well. The first one was lazy, but this one takes the cake for how lazy it is, to be quite honest with you. So the next steps now are I need to probably send my solicitor an email very shortly, today or tomorrow, and just say, look, can we schedule a call where we, we have the talk? That talk will be 
what did you think? What is their position? You need to start telling me about court now. And the only way I will not pursue court action is if she turns around and tells me the percentage chance of me willing, winning sorry, is below a certain percentage. And I think I've determined that percentage, but it's something I have to think about because, I mean, I know y'all think I'm an absolute millionaire. I mean, I'm not going to go into it. I'm not. I'm, I'm reasonably regular, actually. But anyway, I don't have the money. I don't have the money necessarily. Now, I have probably just enough money to take them to court, but I have just enough money to be able to win. If I lose, I have to pay their fees, and that could be really bad. I don't have that money. I don't have that money at all. Um, I know I don't have to tell you any of this, but I like being as transparent as I can. I can't even afford my, uh, my cosmetics once this Invisalign is done in like eight weeks, maybe less, maybe seven weeks now. I can't afford that. I don't know what I'm going to do. Um, but they need finished off because it's, it's unsafe to have my teeth how they are on the bottom because they ground down so bad. But anyway, it's a different problem. So I don't necessarily have the funds to go there and maybe lose. So while that is always a risk, I'm prepared to chance it if the percentages are a certain point. And Ben put this really well the other day, actually. He said to me, look, if you, if we were going to spend, you know, um, 50,000 or some big number that really means a lot to this shop, it means more to me. I don't have that money, but it means less so to this shop, right? If we were going to spend 50,000 on a plant and put it in a box. How much would you want to gamble that that's not going to go wrong? Because as, as we've covered, if it gets to me and it dies, that's not on the seller, right? It doesn't matter how much money it's worth, guys. Those are the rules I follow. So he said to me, look, how much, how, you know, what, what percentage chance of uh, making it would you take on a plant? And it doesn't have to be 50,000. It could be really any percentage, but obviously, however much the price of the plant is does sway that. Does that make any sense? So he basically said, like, what would be the percentage you'd put on it? And I was, and I gave him a percentage and he was like, yeah, I think that's a good way to think about it. If you wouldn't chance it on a plant import, which is equally unknown, right? Um, predictable in a lot of ways, but also unknown in, in a lot of ways. It's, it is what it is. So what chance would you put on it? And I think I'm going to go off that, um, philosophy, that idea, that notion, that template. And I'm going to make my decision based on it. So although I do say in for a penny, in for a pound, if she came back with a real bad percentage, I need to think about that. And although that is wrong, I, I just have to really go with that. And the plan would be to go straight down to my livery, speak to the livery owner, and then we will determine the best cause of action. But it would obviously be uh, probably another livery to have him sold, so sales livery or something like that. Or if if maybe I might open him up to the public, uh, if someone would like to purchase him and you're into horses and you think you can handle him, that's a separate conversation and I will facilitate that if need be. Um, you would be background checked. Do not take it uh, any other way. i would be vetting this profusely. i would be drawing up a legal agreement so that you knew everything I knew about the horse and you signed to say that you know that because imagine if I sold this horse on and the new owner came back to me. We're not doing that. It'd be drawn up with the same solicitor I have now because she knows everything as well. So that's something I'm going to do going forward no matter who the sale is with. If I have to go down the sales route, there will be a legal agreement drawn up that protects me from this because this horse is, is not awesome. So that would be done and it would be signed and it would be legally backed and, and transparent and everything else. And if the other side wants to make changes to that agreement, they can. And it's a whole thing. But that's what would happen anyway. I'm not going to not do that at this point. I've learned enough. And if that happens, say I sell the horse, I get some money back. I may wait a little while for a new horse. Well, I'm certainly not going to jump jump into looking, but I might have to probably buy from a dealer at that point because I don't trust private sellers anymore because I've learned a lot about what kind of protection you have and don't have. So I'd rather buy from a trader. So essentially, guys, that's the update. Now, the next time I give you an update... It's a tough one, right? Because I would love to tell you the percentages that she has given me. I don't know, as of watching this, if the seller is aware of, not who I am, but you know what I mean, aware of this channel, aware of what I do and everything else. I did mention it to her at the time briefly, but I don't suppose she cares. So I don't suppose she even knows these videos are, are a thing. She might. 
If she does, again, I'm protected. I'm not saying anything bad. I wouldn't want to release information that at that point is super sensitive to a, to a court case. So I will tell you what I can. I can, I can tell you if I've decided to go to a court and if I thought whatever percentage chance of, I had of winning, um, you know, was enough or not enough or what my plan is, that's fine. I will do that. I will take my time and consider that and consider all the options. So I don't know when I'm going to speak to my sister about it, but I suspect it will be this week or maybe next week at the latest. And we're just going to see what she says. I want to know. She comes back to me and she's like, yo, yo, 90% likely you're going to win this. I'm probably going to go to court. She'd have to say something not so good, you know. Um, so we will see. And I don't think the other side knowing that changes anything. I think they know that I'm likely to go to court at this point. And again, I, I am going to go. It, it's more likely that I am than I'm not. It just, it, she has to not say something really bad. So that's the case anyway with that. I potted this guy up, by the way. He's in a, he's in a mad mixture of stuff. I'm not going to go into it because I don't want necessarily anybody using it until I know it's good. So I will talk about it in the future if I like it, but it's, it's custom mix. I bought these items individually, uh, individually. I can't speak today and I've mixed it all up. I'm going to pull this off because it's, it's quite minging now, actually. <gasps> Why didn't you tell me, guys? Sorry, I know that's probably getting my mic. No. It's literally my gym gear. So I'm going to go to my PT and she's going to be like, what happened to you? It's really bad. I need some new fitness clothes, you know. Oh, and someone, while I'm clearing up, uh, have been asked about uh, my personal trainer and stuff like that. I'm really enjoying it. Um, I might not look any different. I don't know. No, I'm not looking any different at all. But... I feel different and those that know me in real life and see more of me can see that I look different. So I'm very, very happy with how it's going. Very, very happy how it's going. I've gained so much strength. Um, I probably doubled my strength easily. I can lift shit that I could not lift anymore. I'm able to lift these containers quite well because I can just deadlift them now. Whereas beforehand, it sounds really silly, but I didn't know how to lift something properly. So having a personal trainer has actually taught me how to do that because of deadlifts. If you don't know what deadlifts are, Look them up. Really cool. Um, so I'm really, really happy with it. I'm happy with progress. It's a long progress. Um, I'd like to have a personal trainer for as long as I can humanly possibly have one. And that's all I've really got to say. And then it's just going really well. I'm very happy with my strength, happy with my progression. And I, I feel better. My body's changed shape a little bit. It, it, all in all, again, it's not a lot to say other than, yeah, I'm enjoying it. All right, this is him. He's so nice, isn't he? Plastic tags. Bought them off Amazon, by the way. Nothing special, but posh. Most of the time, I don't tag things because I know what they are. I can just tell tell what they are, even when they're babies. It's when I have chunks and little tiny propagations that I tend to label them. But right, there we go. That is all of the things. This is really icky and minging. Um, but I think we're done. So we did homolamina over there that may go to my house. We'll see how it grows in here. Uh, the variegate gloriosum, which hopefully it will continue its journey to becoming really sexy. And then we have the Aglaonema manila. And I think that's it. Done really well there. So I will end this video <laughs> by saying thank you for continuing to support me because I don't thank you enough. Thank you very much for that. I really appreciate that. This video has covered a wide range of stuff to try and go over it while I remember it. Don't be offended at things you've said if I've responded to comments and now you feel terrible about saying something. It's okay, honestly. I'm not angry about it or anything. It's just... I like to put reminders out there about my private life every so often, and this is under that umbrella. Um, but also, maybe don't ask if people are pregnant, generally. That's, it's quite personal, actually. But, um, yeah, so there's that. The supplier issue, again, just being transparent with you. Um, I'd rather just do it this way, because there's actually the only way left to do it now. Either that, or I just have to say goodbye to my money. I'm not really prepared to do that. I don't think I should do that. Uh, the horse thing, again, I know not everyone likes the horse stuff, but... It is what it is. I think it's quite interesting to learn about it anyway from a, like a litigation perspective. And it's one of the reasons why I'm happy to go through with it in a lot of ways, even if it doesn't end well, because I feel like it's a really good life lesson to learn. Because if it doesn't go well, heck, at least I've, you know, I've been in a courtroom. I've learned about court. I've, I've gone through all that. And I kind of, I understand how to litigate and things like that. Because as you may know, there's been a lot of stuff go on with me and my channel. Uh, over the last three years. I don't know how many times I've had people threatening to sue me for going to a nursery and filming it, even though they're not the owner. Very odd. I've had uh, I've had all manner of things. I've had other influencers threaten to sue me. I don't know what the fuck that was about. Um, I've, I've had a few things. So really, this is really good experience. So 
although it is really shit, I'm looking on it reasonably positively as well. And don't feel too bad for me. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? I realize this is kind of first world problems. So don't think I'm stood here not being grateful for everything I have because I am. It's just, it's, it's getting tough at the minute financially and stuff. It's because the house is coming again. I have to save it for money for stuff like that. Or I essentially won't have floors in there. There will be concrete. So I need to put a lot of money into that and stuff. It's getting tight, but it'll be okay. And honestly, just thank you. Thank you for your support. Whenever there's sponsors on these videos, obviously it goes without saying that Squarespace sponsored this video and I'm very thankful for that. It's lovely to have sponsors. It really helps me out, as you can probably imagine. So onwards and upwards, really. Maybe not upwards, but certainly onwards. <laughs> we will keep going through this. Um, and hopefully I've got some sort of updates for you in the future. Maybe in a month's time, if this supplier actually decides to do the right thing. Maybe sooner, if he doesn't. Um, because I'm not prepared to wait a month for him to sort it. He doesn't need a month. He's already had a week or two. Maybe even longer than that, actually. So, yeah. Anyway, thank you very much for watching this video. I realized it was long. I hope you enjoyed it. Any comments you have for me, I respect that there is going to be different points of view on this, on several things I've said in this video. That's absolutely fine. You can have a different opinion from me, but I just ask that you are respectful about it. If you write something that's just dickish, I will just remove it. So if you have criticism, feedback, or something else, not that I'm actually inviting it, but commenters don't care, do they? Just be nice about it. That's all I'm asking you to do. Just be adult about it. And we can have an adult conversation if I choose to respond to it. But other than that, don't be a dick because I'm not here for that either. So thank you very much for watching. If you'd like to see any of my other content, especially the stuff that I mentioned in this video, I mentioned two videos, they are in the description. Also, you can see the videos on the rest of my channel if you've missed any or you're new. And I guess that's it for this week's video, guys. I should be seeing you next week for... Hopefully something really cool if I get it finished in time. So thank you very much, and I'll see you next time. Bye, guys.